This is a question I get asked every day. I'm approaching menopause. I'm not the same as I was. What now? Should I take hormones? Is hormone therapy even safe? What about the risks of breast cancer? Hormone replacement therapy or HRT can be a bit confusing, not just for women, but for their partners as well. And then there's the media who have made HRT controversial. So let's simplify it today by starting from the basics. Our hormones are essentially chemical messengers in our body. They're incredibly important and we have many different types. Aside from the sex hormones, which I'll focus on today, we'll also have hormones like insulin, which helps manage blood sugar, and thyroxine, which is important for our metabolism, stress hormones like cortisol, and feel-good hormones like serotonin, our happy hormone, and dopamine, our reward hormone. These also play crucial roles. Even our gut has its own hormones. They travel through our bloodstream and tell different parts of our body how to work and stay healthy. Now about our sex hormones, there's estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. They might sound complex, but their origin is surprising. Simply cholesterol. Yes, cholesterol, often labeled as bad, is actually crucial for producing these hormones. From cholesterol, various enzymes create these sex hormones. These hormones are primarily produced in women's ovaries and also in other organs, including our brains. It's not just the ovaries that control these hormones. It's a whole body affair. There's a neat system in our brain involving hormones like follicular stimulating hormone or FSH and luteinizing hormone, also known as LH, and they help regulate our sex hormones. When hormone levels drop, the brain signals for more production. If we can't produce enough, other hormones in our body like thyroid or stress hormones might try to compensate. As we age, our ovaries become less efficient, leading to a drop in hormone production levels. This affects our menstrual cycle. Every month in the reproductive years, you experience hormones changing before periods, estrogen and progesterone levels drop, which might make some women feel down, irritable, or even crave sugar. Hormones are vital to our health. And as they fluctuate or decrease, especially with age, HRT can be a way to help maintain balance and well-being. And studies show the protective benefits of hormones outweigh the harmful risks we have been led to believe by the media. This is the most important decision for your health you'll want to know as you're entering menopause. And a lot of people get it wrong. The perimenopause and menopause stages are key times in a woman's life where hormone levels undergo significant changes. Here's a simplified explanation. First, in perimenopause, this is the phase before menopause where hormone levels, especially estrogen and progesterone, start to fluctuate wildly. It's not an overnight change. Rather, it's a gradual process where the ovaries slowly reduce their hormone production. This can lead to varying symptoms. Some women might feel fine one day and then have intense symptoms the next. Then there's menopause. When a woman reaches menopause, her ovary stops producing hormones like estrogen and progesterone, leading to permanently low levels of these hormones. This happens regardless of your lifestyle choices like diet, exercise, or sleep quality. For some women, menopause can happen earlier, either naturally or due to surgery, like having your ovaries removed which can also lead to low hormone levels. Then there's the impact of low hormone levels beyond the common symptoms associated with menopause, like hot flashes or mood swings. Low levels of sex hormones can increase the risk of several diseases. These include heart disease, osteoporosis, type two diabetes, depression, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, inflammatory bowel disease, certain types of arthritis, multiple sclerosis, and even some cancers. This is because the sex hormones play a role in reducing inflammation in the body. Hormone replacement therapy, or HRT, 
Given the crucial role of hormones, there's a question of why HRT isn't more widely discussed or offered, similar to how, let's say, a thyroid hormone replacement is standard for people with underactive thyroid glands. Part of the reason lies in the complexities and controversies surrounding the sex hormones, partially due to their association with women's health and a lack of adequate training on the biological importance of these hormones. In summary, understanding the changes in hormone levels during perimenopause and menopause and their broader health impacts is vital. It highlights the importance of considering hormone replacement therapy as a potential tool to manage these changes and reduce the risk of the serious related diseases. I was already two years into menopause before I discovered this. Hormones like estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone are critical for the female brain. The scientific evidence is undeniable about the benefits of HRT. Unfortunately, many women either can't access HRT or are afraid to use it due to the emphasized risks associated with it. HRT is short for hormone replacement therapy. It isn't exactly replacing hormones. It's more about replenishing what's lacking. A better term might be natural hormone treatment. In menopause, it's about supplementing the decreasing hormones and in menopause, it's about substituting what's no longer need being produced, though the types and doses can vary greatly. Let's delve into a basic overview of hormones. HRT prescriptions have evolved significantly in the last 25 years. Initially, HRT mainly involved tablet forms of estrogen and progesterone derived from pregnant horses' urine. Today, those aren't used anymore. The estrogen used back then was conjugated eccrine estrogens and the progesterone was a synthetic chemically altered version similar to what's in contraceptive pills. However, medical science has advanced and now we use natural body identical hormones identical to those our body produced when we were younger. The safest way to administer estrogen is through the skin, either via a patch or putting on a gel. These gels are clear and applied directly to the skin, absorbing into the bloodstream. And the skin acts as a reservoir, slowly releasing the hormones. However, absorption can vary greatly amongst women due to factors like skin temperature, and texture. Blood tests can be done to ensure proper absorption is happening and dosage is being received. If the levels are low, the dose or the preparation itself can be adjusted. For estrogen, patches are also available. These should be applied to the clean, dry skin and changed at least twice a week. Placement and absorption can vary even within the same individual. Studies show that about a third of women are already on HRT, but it's not effective for them. Adjusting the preparation, not just the dose, often solves the issue. It's about how much hormone is absorbed, not just the amount administered. There's a misconception about the risks associated with HRT, especially regarding clotting and breast cancer. Estrogen applied through the skin doesn't increase clotting risks, unlike oral estrogens which can double the small inherent clotting risk. Notably, estrogen has been shown to lower the risk of breast cancer, contradicting the warnings in the medication insert. In fact, women on HRT have a significantly reduced risk of cardiovascular diseases due to estrogen's anti-inflammatory effects. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Cheers to your health and hormone balance.